Okay. I want to make this quick because I am extremely busy right now. I just got back and I'm took about to take a shower out of this because I got some last minute crap I gotta do. Because for some reason, things always happen at the last minute before the holidays. Don't know why. It just happens. So, as for this episode, I did watch it last night. But very late last night. And then I had to watch it again because last night I was pissed. I, I, I watched it like, oh my god, I went to bed pissed off. Like, are you kidding me? Really? You, you pull that shit? But then I had to watch it again. And I was like, when I watched it again, I wasn't as mad. In fact, I was more understandable of what happened in the episode of Release of Spice. I told myself, maybe I was more mad because things didn't go the way I wanted them to go than for what really happened. No one said that this was going to be a really dark series. No one said that. And it wasn't. It was just our expectations knowing the creator who usually does stuff like this with a guy we got killed in the Yuki Yuna series. So we were expecting this. But just because it's from our creator doesn't mean we should expect the same thing every single time. So I had to really think about this. In a way, give myself a more of an outside perspective about this and see was this really as bad as I thought it would be? And my answer is no. First, I was going to say, okay, final episode was very disappointing. But at the end of the day, it wasn't. May being a double agent was, from the get-go, I kind of saw that coming. Like I said, there are two ways I would have been happy about this. One, she was a double agent and, and things were back normal. But I also thought if everything was said and done after this big mission, she would just run off and she would be wanted. That would have been something I wanted, but since I didn't get that, I was mad last night. But then I understood, even I said myself throughout my reviews, that the clues of her being a double agent was being shown because how Goy Chan was able to get out of her chair or how she was going light on Fu, these were all signs that she herself was actually still on the same good guys team. So after seeing that, I'm like, I can't get mad at that. The, the evidence was always in our face. Seeing what happened, it made a lot of sense. This was being thought about for years now, their plan to have a spy infiltrate. And spy has been going on since I know it for years, even inside a revolutionary war where some spies would go on the red coat side and they would pretend to be part of them. Or even slaves would be spies as well to give information to the other receiving end. After thinking about this, I'm like, you know, this is understandable. It really is, and therefore I can't get mad at that. Then that everything was in front of our faces, and they did explain it to a D, and when they did explain it, it didn't sound like bullshit. It really did. They thought this through for years. They planned this out the entire time. So, after thinking about that, like, I can't get mad at this anymore, you know? I was just mad because things didn't go the way I wanted it to, and I can't let that kind of biased opinion ruin my thought for the show itself. So because of that, I decided to just let it go. Just let it go. And I know some people were probably pissed off at that, but all I gotta say is just let it go. You can't get mad at a show for doing something that you that you wanted them to do. If they don't do that, you can't get mad at that for them. Because that's their writing. That's the way they should write their story. So I review what's there and what's not there. I could complain about what should be there or what shouldn't be there, but that, I don't think that should be for me to complain about. Because I thought that's their work. It's like when I create something, I don't want someone to tell me what should and should be there. That's how I want it to be. So therefore, I clear my mind about that. So after that, I got to enjoy the episode. Same with the final battle between Momo and Tendo. Tendo, of course, using all sorts of trickery, even trying to get our head about her father's death. However, it was kind of stated that Morio was probably had a hand with her father's death. But even with that, she ignored it. In a way, everybody that seen from Hunter x Hunter, where um, um, Gunn was listening to some recording his father left, and the father was about to explain about who his mother was, but Gunn didn't care. This is kind of reminded of that scene, but not as dramatic, where Tendo will try to say, you know why your father died, right? Was it really an accident? No, it was because probably Morio, but she didn't care. That wasn't what was important. That is within the past. So because of that, she was able to 
already have the strength to come forward for that. She can't do nothing about it, even if she knew the information. That only gave her more encouragement to stop Tendo even more in what she did in the end. Could Tendo be dead? Um, you could say she killed Tendo in a way, but Tendo could still be alive. You know, speech by shows do that kind of crap a lot. <laughs> and it's, so if she's alive, I want to be surprised. But I would be more surprised if she was actually dead. I mean, Momo, in a way, kind of killed someone when you think about it. So without that, with that being said, Everything wraps up, you know, um, Theresa is alive, even some of the other bad guys, the muscular woman is alive too, some freaking how, and has joined them. I felt that was too of a goody-goody ending in a way, but what really did get me that made me satisfied was Yuki's um, retirement. That, in a way, was, I didn't see coming. I think, like, okay, raise my memory. Like, okay, so we're pulling off a man in black here. Okay, we're doing a man in black here. Hopefully, if that's the case, hopefully they don't have to bring her back like they did man in black, too. So, if she just stays gone, that's nice. So, everyone knew that that um, later on, whether Yuki would die or where she would just retire, Momo Chan would completely eventually become a mentor, which she did. We saw her supporting it, um, her apprentice, her training her. Not as tough as Yuki, but more of a happy, energetic way. So, which is nice, she's training her apprentice in her own kind of way, while still kind of using some of Yuki's methods, probably. Other than that, no one actually got, um, um, got, no one got promoted to mentor yet. It was just Momo, even though she was the last one to really join. So I was like, really? Really? So besides that, um, Yuki leaving was kind of interesting. I did enjoy that in a way. Like, okay, they like they give something in return. So not everything was a happy hat. It was a happy ending, but it was sad that she won't be able to fight with Yuki anymore. In fact, she won't probably do anything with Yuki anymore. So of course, that smile at the end kind of showed could Yuki still remember something, or she's just smiling. We don't know, but. A lot of open air questions that was left. So let's talk about the final wrap up story. At first, like I said, the first episode, I was a bit off by it. I didn't like it, and I still don't. The remaining of the show, however, I like. I really do. So one out of 12 episodes, I hate, but 11 out of 12 episodes, I like. Because of that, that's a passing rate in its own. Most of the time, you would have a majority of episodes you could hate in the show. But the fact that I only hate one episode out of the whole entire series, that is not bad, in my opinion. Animation. Animation was on point. It was nice, glossy, it was cute, it was badass. The animation never seemed to really drop as most shows this season did. Even very popular ones were animation, and especially with the CGI. Oh my god, CGI this season was just ridiculous. Ugh. But this show had it going, especially with the music. Oh god, I think this had one of the best soundtracks, actually, of the season, if you ask me. The music was always up to beat. It was nice. It was catchy. I love the opening. I love the battle sequences. It was just amazing to watch. And the characters, like I said, the characters as the time went on became very memorable. They stood out. They had their own goals, their own reasons. Their personalities completely grew. Hasme being this kind, friendly person who was be everyone's friend. The point is kind of creepy. Going on is being this very shy but trivially strong girl. Momo being a very generic but yet still interesting main character. Yugi being a tough, strict senpai but yet having a sweet side to her. Fu being the very young but very cocky, but yet stern character, and of course my favorite Mei being a character you couldn't really predict at the same time, but yet laid back and seemed to be a slacker, but seemed to know what she was doing. And even most of the bad guys, Tendo was pretty interesting, Theresa was good in her inner conflict with herself, Bayakuyo um, joining the team. Um, slowly by first hating them, then slowly coming onto them and stuff. Being part of the family, it was cute. The muscular woman came out of nowhere. Like, why did they bring her back? That made no freaking sense. That's the only thing I really didn't understand about this episode was bringing the muscular woman back. Like, 
she could just stay dead or somewhere, you know, her being joined them, it made no sense. But they did anyway, so like, yeah, sure, whatever, just have her in there too. So, yes, Release of Spice was damn good. It was good. I am glad I watched the series. Of course I was gonna watch the series. It's Tucker Hero, anything that she writes or animates or draws, I'm going to watch or read it. So that is without a doubt, and I will talk about it. And yes, my um, Tucker Hero comparing to Yoko Taro is still on its way. I'm taking a break though for now. So I'm probably gonna try to upload stuff um, this coming weekend. I'll be very busy as well because my birthday is also coming up. So just just too much is going on right now for me. But other than that, I did enjoy Release of Spice. A good conclusion for a very interesting series. A breath of fresh air. It's been a while since we had some good spy stuff. But besides Double Decker, but that's more detective cop stuff. You know, the buddy buddy cop thing. But other than that, yes, Release of Spice, definitely. I highly recommend you watch it. Between you and me, the first episode will drag you on a bit. But you gotta push through and go for the remainder of the episodes because they are damn good. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please rate, comment, subscribe, and of course hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload. This is Barakon Anime, signing out. Merry Christmas.